This is the review of the soil classification problem from your midterm exam. Here is the information you were provided for the question. You should probably pause the recording now and take a moment to review this. The first step to the classification process <clears throat> is to determine whether or not we have a coarse grain or a fine grain soil. To do this, we examine the percent of soil passing the number 200 sieve, which is the dividing line between coarse and fine grain soils. In this case, we have 18% of the soil passing the number 200 sieve. So clearly, this is a coarse grain soil, which means it's either a sand or a gravel. That's our next step, is to determine whether it's a sand or a gravel. To do this, we need to examine the percent of the material that passes the number 4 sieve, which is a dividing line between sand and gravel. In this case, 55% of the soil is passing the number 4 sieve. So that means that the percent gravel is 100 minus 55, or 45%. Now this is a place where many people make a mistake. They see that the uh, percent of the sample is only 45% gravel, so therefore it must be sand since less than half of it is gravel. But that is an incorrect assumption. We must actually calculate the percent sand. In this case, that's 55 minus 18, or 37% and the remaining 18% is fines. So clearly in this case, even though less than half of the sample is gravel, the majority of the coarse grain portion of the sample is gravel. So this soil must classify out as a gravel. So its, it's symbol will be G something. We don't know what kind of gravel yet. That's the next stage. It's to determine out what type of gravel this is. So as we said, we know it's a G for gravel, but we don't know what type of gravel. There are three possibilities here. If the soil has very little fines, very little uh, uh, clay or uh, silt material, then it'll be classified either as a GP, a, a poorly graded gravel, or a GW, a well graded gravel. If on the other hand it has a great deal of uh, fine material, it'll classify either as a GM, silty gravel, or a GC, a clay gravel, depending on the type of fines. Or, if it has a medium amount of, of uh, fine grain material, we'll actually have to classify it, classify it with both of these types. Uh, it'll be either a GPGC, or a GPGM, or GWGM, etc. So to determine um, what is a small amount or a large amount of fines, we must refer to the, classific the ASTM classification chart, and this is part of figure 5.7, just the gravel portion. So we've already determined that it's a gravel. Then we look at the percent passing the number 200 sieve to determine which of these uh, methods we're going to have to use to classify it. And if there's less than 5% fines, that's the small amount of fines, and the soil is going to classify either as a GW or a GP. And then, in this case, we need to do a <coughs> grain size distribution and determine both the coefficient of uniformity and the coefficient of concavity, CU and CC. If there's greater than 12% fines, then the soil is going to classify either the GM, a GC, or a GMGC. And in this case, we're going to need to know the Atterberg limits. And if it's in between, that is between 5 and 12%, then we're going to have to do both, uh, determine the, both the grain size distribution curve and the Atterberg limits. In our case, <clears throat> 18% of the soil is passing the number 200 sieve, so this must classify either as a GC or a GM, and all we need to know is the Atterberg limits. This is important to know because there's no point in calculating C sub U and C sub C because it's not needed for the classification. So, let's check the Atterberg limits. Now we know from the problem statement that the Atterberg limits uh, measured on the fine portion of the sample uh, gave us a liquid limit of 52% and a plastic limit of 34%. We're going to need to cal calculate the plasticity index from these. We know that the plasticity index is a difference between the liquid limit and the plastic limit, or 52 minus 34, which is equal to 18. So now we can classify the fines using uh, figure 5.4. So we go in at the at a liquid limit of equal to 52, and we go into the plasticity index of 18, and we find <coughs> that this uh, soil plots below the A-line, so it's a silt. And then the group symbol 
of this uh, soil must be GM. Notice that it doesn't matter whether it's a low plasticity or a high plasticity silt, it's simply going to be a silty gravel. Well, we're nearly done now, but we finally need to determine the group name. So to determine the group name, we have to look in the detail of figure 5.7 again. We know that we have a GM material. Now the question is, is it just a silty gravel, or is it a silty gravel with sand? In our case, we have more than 14% uh, sand, so our soil classifies as a silty gravel with sand. And the final classification is GM, silty gravel with sand. That's all.